We're next going to examine thermal systems, which have two variables of interest, temperature T and heat flow rate Q. Generally, we're interested in the temperature difference across two elements. And in that sense, temperature is analogous to the pressure in a fluid system, or velocity of a mechanical system, or voltage in a, an electrical system. Heat flow rate Q is, of course, similar to the flow rate of a fluid system, but uh, it's also analogous to the force in a mechanical system or the current in an electrical system. There are only two elements of interest in thermal systems. One of them is the thermal resistance, and it's very similar to the uh, thermal, the fluid resistance, and has a similar formula for the element law, which is that the flow rate is 1 over R times the temperature difference, generally with respect to an ambient temperature. Here, heat flow rate is proportional to the temperature dis difference across the resistor. And the higher the resistance, the lower the flow rate. There's also a thermal capacitance, C, which uh, describes the ability to store energy, generally as an increase in temperature. The element law is the total heat flowing in is equal to C times S times T, where again, S stands for the time derivative. And you can think of this equation as basically saying that the heat that flows in is integrated or stored as temperature, and the amount of temperature rise is going to depend on C. The larger the capacitance C, the smaller the temperature rise for a certain amount of heat in. In a th thermal capacitance, we're interested in the total heat flowing in, which in this case has two sources. One is a heat source, Q in, which is heat flowing into the system, but there's also heat leaking out of the system through this resistance denoted by the hash marks into ambient temperature. We apply uh, our thermal capacitance law to each capacitance in the system, and let's do an example of that for this exact system. Here we know that the thermal capacitance law, C times S times T minus TA, is equal to Q in minus Q out. Q out is the flow through the resistance, which is 1 over R times T minus TA. Now ambient temperature we're going to treat as constant, so that means that we can just write C times S times T, since we know that C times S times T TA is zero, uh, meaning the derivative of constant value is zero. This is equal to Q in minus 1 over R times T minus TA, or we can combine the terms and get C times S times 1 over plus 1 over R times T is equal to Q in plus 1 over R times TA.